So if you are looking for a laser range finder and you haven't bought one yet, uh, here's a small list and there's a lot of different ones to choose from besides the ones that are on this list. Now, these are just some of the more popular ones that have a pretty good reputation uh, within their price bracket uh, for working pretty good. And I have uh, the model listed here, the approximate uh, retail price that you can usually find them for. And then here's uh, some of the information you want to be kind of familiar with is you got to realize that these things are going to perform drastically different depending on what kind of conditions they're in exactly. Now, the atmospheric conditions are going to vary a lot. The conditions of the target and the background and the reflectivity of the target are going to vary a lot. So you're going to get a lot of differences of opinion on what the max effective range of each one of these lasers is going to be. Um, but I tried to subdivide this as, as honestly and as accurately as I could to get a good honest average of their real world performance. Um, for example, we can look at the uh, Nukon 2000 Pro for $500 and uh, the, under ideal conditions, that, that's quantifying everything. That means I have a brand new fresh battery in there. Uh, you have a nicely defined high reflectivity target against a nice uh, clear backstop that's also reflective and everything's just hunky-dory. I can get readings depending on some of the other variables, usually beyond 1,200 meters and sometimes out to 2,300 meters under real good conditions. Under poor conditions where the battery is not perfectly fresh or there's uh, some obstruction in the atmosphere, you have dust or fog or something, it's going to be considerably less on the max effective range of this laser, uh, usually under 1,200 meters. But I almost always get a reading out to 800. So that's what that's talking about there. You look at the target acquisition confidence. That's kind of talking about what we uh, mentioned earlier as far as our beam divergence. And that's going to be pretty important to realize that these different lasers are going to have a different kind of cone going out as far as your beam divergence. They're going to start spreading out as we talked about earlier. And um, it's going to be important to realize that when you spend a little bit more money sometimes... Um, that's where you get a lot more narrower concentrated of a beam and it's going to be giving you more target acquisition confidence that when you point that thing at a small target at long range it's actually hitting that target only and it's not giving you a diversity of, of reflection and then the computer that's another thing each one of these different laser range finders has to interpret the data that comes back and make sense out of it because it's not only going to get the reading off the target, a lot of times due to this uh, effect, you're going to have readings coming off of other things around the periphery of the target as well. And the computer is going to have to sort that out and pick what it thinks the target is. And so with all that in mind, you're going to have different levels of confidence with some of these different uh, laser range finders. And uh, there's a whole lot of different things that come into effect here. But any of these on this page are going to be relatively good within their effective range brackets. And uh, you're going to want to make the decision based on what cartridge and load you're shooting. So if you're shooting like a 223, um, this RX 1000 would be a great choice. 400 bucks, that's pretty good for the money, pretty cheap. It's going to get you out plenty far enough to work for that cartridge. And uh, it's going to have plenty of target acquisition confidence within those parameters. If you're shooting a uh, 408 shy tac Man, you're going to need something a lot better. You're going to have to go up to probably a Vectronix, one of these Vectronix ones, depending on what your budget is and how far you're planning on shooting. Actually, the Terrapin is going to work for pretty much anything. And uh, 2200 bucks, you're going to get out to at least 2,000 meters, uh, a lot of times way further than that, 5,000. Uh, but you're never going to be short of a mile with the, the Vectronix Terrapin. So... And actually, if I had to give my top recommendation for uh, value and everything else considered, if you're going to be using a laser rangefinder, I always count on the worst possible performance, the poorest conditions, because it seems like Murphy's Law always comes true when you're talking about this kind of equipment, is the thing is going to fail if it has any excuse to fail. So you're going to want to weigh... Uh, overshoot your quality requirements when when, when making a decision like this. Uh, uh, determining the range of the target is important. If you're doing extreme long, sh if you're doing extreme long range shooting, you're not going to only rely on your range finding reticle in your scope or in your spotting scope. It's not going to give you a close enough determination of the range that's going to get you inside of your danger space at longer ranges. You're going to need to use a laser, most likely. 
Um, so make sure you get a pretty good one. The, the best one, if you guys can afford the Vectronics Terrapin, if you can find one on sale even or whatever, that's the one to get. If I had to do it all over again and start from scratch, um, you'd save money by getting this one. It's about two grand. Sometimes they're a little more, sometimes they're a little less. But uh, this thing's going to cover all your bases. If Especially if you got a big Super Magnum, you're shooting a 338 Lapua, 7mm mag, even a 300 wind mag. You know, if you're going to want to be pushing 12, 1500 meters once in a while, you're going to be really frustrated when you get everything set up and your other rangefinder that you got doesn't really hold its ground. So if you if you just want to quit the screwing around, that's the one to get, bar none. Uh, these other Vectronics ones are really more for other applications, but uh, those are also really good choices. The Vector 4 is used by a lot of guys. Actually, it's uh, pretty good for um, certain things with the Vectronics 23. Um, those are good for other applications, which we won't get into in this series. But um, the Terrapin will take care of business for you and at a pretty good price, especially when you compare it to the Zeiss and the Leica. You get better performance for less money. Uh, so that's that's a clear uh, choice. That's a clear choice as far as I'm concerned. So to make a long story short, take all the different laser rangefinders in the world. The Vectronics Terrapin is probably your best choice for this particular application. So go ahead and look into that. There's lots of other guys' reviews on these products. Check out the Vectronics Terrapin if uh, that's something that you're looking for as a laser rangefinder, and I think you'll. Uh, probably come to the same conclusion. If not, just make sure that whatever you do get, that it is overkill for whatever you're anticipating you're going to need. If you plan on shooting a thousand meters and that's it, you're going to want a range finder that's guaranteed out to 2000 because under less than ideal conditions, you'd be lucky to get a thousand out of it. So just keep that in mind.